What's up? What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Creed of Crypto podcast. My name is Broke Boy Crypto, and I have here with me, as always, my friend and co-host, Crypto Ewok. We have a fantastic show for you this evening. If you are just making your way in, do us a favor. Pound the like button. We appreciate it. We do this show every single Tuesday night now, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. of A. We have a lot to get to tonight. Tonight, actually, specifically, we've got a whale that we need to talk about. Alex the whale that um, uh, uh, made a couple of moves here. A couple of splashes. Yeah, made a couple of splashes in the water there. Last, uh, well, actually, it was Sunday, Sunday evening, actually. We saw a huge dip in the Pulse Chain ecosystem. Um, we'll kind of get to that price here in a moment, see where we're at there. We have <clears> CPI <throat> data that came out today, lower than expected. Um, ETH gas fees have been out of control the last few days. A lot of stuff to get to tonight. So, hey, we want to hear from you guys. Hit us up with your comments in the chat. Uh, questions, whatever you want to hit us with, uh, go ahead and do it. We will uh, we'll take a look at what you got to say, and we'll get into it tonight. Uh, before we get into the markets and everything, Ewok, how are you feeling about everything? I'm feeling good. Um, trying to stay away from all the drama. <laughs> and yeah, I feel the, 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 the better you do that, the, the, the better off you are. You know, it's, it's, it's that time of season, you know, where, like I said, two steps forward, one step back, and uh, yeah, that's all we yeah. can do. Make our way through it and keep buying as we can that's pretty much it right now yeah there's definitely um you know it's i guess i guess overall it's kind of a boring time but hey we did just have you know so how soon we all forget i heard somebody say this the other day we just had this like massive not massive but a pretty good run-up in the ecosystem mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago and now we're having like the kind of pullback that you would expect to get yeah. after that does happen so attributed to alex the whale if that is his real name or whoever you want but it is what it is uh welcome in drew humberto uh from colombia tonight um we've got Johnny Chaos in the chat. Drew, I think I already said. DJ Moonboy, welcome in, everybody. Uh, smash the like on your way, and we very much appreciate it. Let's take a look real quick at BTC and ETH today. Uh, I guess there was a minor dip that people are freaking out over on crypto Twitter. Um, we've got Bitcoin back below 36K now, but hey, we're still in a good range for Bitcoin, up over 35,000. So it, it, we've had some bullish action over the last few weeks for sure. Uh, ETH dropped below 2,000. It's at 1985 right now, but still it's performed well over the last few months too. Um, actually turning and looking at our ecosystem. So again, you know, we did have the rally up over uh, quad zeros and a seven for Pulse Chain just the other day. And it was, you know, we were thinking, hey, maybe we'll turn that number, that seven number into support because, um, you know, that, that was kind of a breaking point for it to get through. And we were above it for a few days. But, you know, uh, the the whale, Alex, is among others, obviously, selling over the last few days to start off with eHex on Sunday. And now the ecosystem's come down a bit. Today's been a little bit of a red day. Um, good day for buying, for sure, which I've yep. been trying to do. Uh, but, yeah, we're sitting right now at four zeros and a six five for Pulse. Pulse X about 80% down from SAC rate. Hex on a Pulse chain is at 1.2 cents. And eHex... Uh, right, you know, as it has been about 50% off of that at seven tenths of a penny. So, yep. um, we're going to get into the specific topic of the Alex the Whale stuff. So, don't worry about that. Um, we're, we're going to approach it from a lot of angles. You know, should we be platforming these people? Should we be interviewing them? Should we, how much should we really care about their actions? We're going to talk about all of that from a lot of different angles, but purely just looking at the price stuff, regardless of what individual is doing any of the buying or selling you walk. Um, yeah, what do you make of? the charts right now and this pullback because I, I was getting a little optimistic that maybe we flip that uh four zeros and a seven for pulse which is kind of how i track the ecosystem price wise i know some people look at hex um i think either one is probably the the good anchor to kind of look at but what do you make of where we are right now uh in this pullback and you know i think we're both very confident that the lows are have been in for this ecosystem but uh, as we're about 2x up off of them but where what do you think about where we are right now well yeah it's exactly what i had just said two steps forward like from here to here one step uh, you, you're not sharing your screen oh. by the way i just noticed i thought i was sorry i think you were earlier there you there go, go. Kind of, yep um so yeah it's <clears throat> here's your two steps forward here's your one step back you know it, it, it's going to bounce around we're going to you know find another local bottom here and hopefully have another little run up I think that 0.7 is a, a healthy little target here because, you know, we've we've got a lot of resistance 
uh, that, that came into play here on the on the rise up. We did break through it, but it couldn't hold. So, you know, the, the, the more times we test it, the weaker it gets. You just need some some good action. You know, you need, obviously, you know what makes the charts go up, right? It's more people buying than, than selling. And until you get some of these traders washed out on a big candle, uh, a, a massive buy that, that just sends it up, you know, and they get left behind and they have to buy for fear of, of missing out, then, you know, they're going to play around in these choppy areas. So that's just it's just a matter of shaking them out and and working through it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a very boring time of the market. You see some nice little rises and, you know, then you get the pullback and you're like, oh, here we go again. It, it's very, you know, it's like a it's like a constant mood swing. <laughs> It is. It is. And you can see it right there on the chart. I mean, like the, the week that we had that crazy run up there. I mean, it, it's so funny how those massive run ups all happen in such a short period of time. And you're just kind of, you know, holding holding on for dear life. And, you know, the, the green candles take you up and then we're having a natural pullback here now. Yep. So, yeah, it, it's like I said at the beginning, it's so quick that we forget like the run up that we just had. And the chart looks really nice right now. I mean, like what you just display looks really good. Yeah, um, healthy. You know, be, Very healthy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have a couple of stair steps there. So I'm um, hoping that continues. If you want, we can take a look at, at uh, Paul Sachs real quick here as well. Sure, um, sure. It, it has been holding up relative to Paul's chain really well, honestly. I mean, clearly it's way, way down from sack rate. We all know that it's been butchered here over the last six months. However, I mean, it's really held that ratio of oscillating between like at, at the lowest, like two and a half to one pulse to pulse X to uh, four to one, but in between there, but about three to one, basically. So, um, yeah, I mean, it has it, it's basically hold its own held its own against pulse here recently. So what do you see with the pulse X chart? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, he, he says it right here. He's like on the you see the cup and handle that's forming. And yeah, right. And that formation is it has, you know, tr traditionally been pretty bullish. So you know, mm -hmm. here's your here's your cup. Here's your handle. And from there, hopefully we see some nice upside. You know, it, it just, again, all it takes is one of these to get a major buy. Because we know, again, that yeah. it's all tied uh, by liquidity. You know, when one takes a run, they're all going to move. So, you know, the combination of, of just more buying overall than selling uh, doesn't take mm -hmm. much. It's just, you know, it's that time where you got to, like I said, wash them out. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's just good that we're at another level here. I mean, we're going to continue to monitor it. But, you know, it's one of those things where you can really relax yourself. You know, obviously, we always hear when in doubt, zoom out. But really, though, if you do look at the weekly schedule, you can calm yourself down a lot. And really, if you're looking at, you know, every I was saying to you off air, putting every red cent that you have into this market right now. I mean, as long as we're under sack rate for pretty much any of this. Well, there's only two that would be under sack rate. But as long as we're under those rates. Right. It's like an auto buy right now. As well, far it's as a I'm steal. Concerned. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a deal better than what people got when they sacrificed, you know, what, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So you got to take advantage of it if you want to increase your position, help your average buy in price. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it'll all work out much better in the end. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I hope that what we just saw the last couple of weeks, I mean, that was just kind of a, you know, prelude to the things that are to come over the next year or two in the bull market. I mean, with how quickly everything just moved up and you can see how quickly you can get caught offside. I mean, like if you wanted to catch that pulse at like almost three tenths of a, well, that, whatever, 70% off sac mm -hmm. rate, that's likely never coming back again. I mean, it, it's possible, I guess, but I, I don't think that's coming back again. So, um, you know, you could sit on your hands during this time when the red dips happen, or you could buy and feel better later you know yep yep, yeah exactly so um so that's where we're with the prices we're gonna get into more of that we're gonna hit on a couple pieces of news that i think were pretty relevant here over the last week one of which was pretty funny um i think middle end of the week last week we had sec chair gary guzzler gensler says that ftx crypto exchange could be rebooted under new leadership 
Uh, and then he said, quote, um, in the same interview, think about how many actors in this space are not complying right now with international sanctions and money laundering laws and are using crypto for nefarious or bad actions. Uh, he said that without naming any companies or any individuals, of course. Um, so, yeah, what do you think about his uh, continued, um, you know, uh, friendship here, I guess, with the entity of FTX, even if Sam Bankman fried is you know, fondling soap in the shower for the rest of his days. Um, yeah, what, what do you think about... Uh, well, I don't know the point of that statement even. I don't know if he was trying to say something positive, uh, meaning that like, well, hey, there's still a chance for this exchange or whatever. I, I don't know. Um, but it's just funny to me that he's even really commenting on FTX really to, to that level. You know? Yeah, he's got no business commenting on any of the FTX stuff. I mean, he's one of the people that allowed it to happen in the first place. You know, the backdoor meetings, the unapproved meetings that uh you, you know when, when these guys meet with the sec they're supposed to be on the calendar and approved by the by the whole sanction sanctioning committee um he did a lot of this stuff backdoor you know behind closed doors uh mm -hmm. without approval and, and things like that when he was originally meeting with sam so I, I i'm not sure what they've got going on you know but when that you have to wonder when they bring up you know the nefarious activities and things like that um, you know, when Warren said about how much uh, money was used for illegal uh, purposes for, for nefarious, whatever it was, yeah. um, she was off by 99%. So it was really only 1% of what she really said was going on. And, you know, they still use cash. They still use cash for all their <laughs> for all their illegal dealings. It's not crypto because crypto has a trace, right? If there's a blockchain. Yeah. So it's easily provable that they're just completely wrong on their facts and figures. Uh, but, you, you know, when they speak, they hear the or, or the, the, the the general public hears them um, and it kind of freaks them out. So I, I think they want to find a way in um, somehow to create yeah. an exchange where they can be the bank and. You know, as for a reboot, I just hope people don't fall for it again. I really do. I mean, you know, it, it, it may be another way for them to introduce a CBDC. I, I, you know, you think about that too, uh, to where people can actually use it. Now, what they'll allow you to buy with that stuff, who knows? It could be, could be very interesting, but, you know, they're going to roll it out at some point. We all know that it's coming. Um yeah. And we just hope that there is absolutely no adoption for it. But, you know, when they provide stimuluses and things like that, using it, because I think that's how they're going to do it this time, is going to say, well, hey, here's another stimulus check because the economy is such shit right now because of what we've done to it. Um, here's a little help, but it's going to be in the form of a CBDC. And, right. you know, this is what you can do or where you can use it or, or whatever it may be. Um, you know, it's just another take on how they're going to implement it and and one of the the steps you know to get people into the digital kind of markets we'll see well you're right i mean one thing we have no shortage of in this country are um you know complete fucking losers so if there is time to you know print more money and hand it out to you very easily with the cbdc uh every man and woman will be waiting with bated breath to accept that and spend it on you know uh made to order food or something like that <laughs> so yeah we'll we'll see i mean um yeah i mean obviously gary gensler uh, has you know deep affection for ftx and the people behind it and uh, has been in cahoots with them all along so yeah i guess we'll just see how they do it um and, and i'm with you i mean this is a topic that we've kind of talked about continuously just a, a thread really but that idea of like will people fall for this shit again in the coming bull cycle now ftx is already like a high, i mean that that one is so publicized that like using that specific exchange i mean yeah i'm sure somebody's gonna do it but on a large scale i don't know that there's a way that you know ftx celsius some of the bigger names like that three arrows can come back um with a new name but the the, the new products like that, that are this is their first cycle or whatever with similar type of behaviors to try to reel people in. I do think people are going to fall for them again. And it's just, you know, I mean, there are so many people out there. We talk about it all the time that do not understand true crypto. I talked about one of my friends who it was months and months ago that I talked to him, but 
uh, we talked a little bit about crypto and he was just saying that he had some ETH left over from the bull market to, that is just staked on Coinbase. Um, so people clearly don't really know how to use this stuff. And uh, just like legacy finance, contrary to what Gensler says, I mean, they're going to get scammed uh, within crypto as well, even though it isn't really crypto. So, yeah, what do you make of that? I mean, are we going to get are we going to get retail people into this market in the bull market that actually do their due diligence and don't make the kind of mistakes or are we just doomed for this to repeat itself, you know, till the end of time? Doesn't history repeat itself until it doesn't? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I think you're going to get the DGENs that 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 fumble in and do whatever when the, when the green candles are coming. You know, maintaining people is probably one of the hardest things to do through the bear market. You know, you saw your first real bear market and, you know, it's hard, right? I mean, mentally, emotionally, everything is difficult. So I understand why it washes so many people out, but it does need that correction. Um, the more we can educate people, the more we can show them the products to be in, at least to, to maintain and make more of it while it's going down, you know, the better we can be. It's, it's just a pure educational thing right now. I, I just hope they, they can find the, the Pulse Chain ecosystem and, and they will stumble their way into Hex eventually. You know, mm -hmm. the, the walls will come down at some point. Uh, it's just a matter of, I, I don't know how long it'll take. You know, a couple cycles, though, you know, these scam narratives kind of start to go away. You know, you make two in good cycles. Hex, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in terms of, well, in Hex and, and Richard Hart overall, you know, yeah. I'm already seeing some of that come down. I think we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But, mm. um, you know, it's starting. It's starting. But... It just, it, it, it takes time. And honestly, sometimes it does take people to lose their money to get serious. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. you know, uh, once they've got a little skin in the game and, and they see that everything's negative, they either get out or they educate themselves um, to, to make a, a new start and to, to be a little bit smarter about their, their investments. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. It is unfortunate. We talked about that last week, but yeah, sometimes people just have to get smacked in the face to, yeah. Learn a lesson. And unfortunately, yeah. when that happens, a lot of people don't learn the lesson. They just exit, you know, rather than doubling down at the bottom. That's just kind of the curve, you know, it comes down here, they stop and then it comes back up here. They come back in, it comes back down and that's just, you know, the cycle. So yeah. um, another huge piece of news last week that uh, speaking of scams, nine trillion dollar asset manager BlackRock registers Ethereum trust in Delaware. BlackRock officially files for then the spot Ethereum ETF with the NASDAQ, um, everyone celebrating, uh, not realizing that they'll probably just, you know, dump ETH on their heads later on. Um, what is it with these people, okay, that are allegedly interested in crypto, that are celebrating the Bitcoin ETFs and now celebrating the ETH ETFs? Um, I mean, all over crypto Twitter last week, you saw like, oh my God, ETH ETF, send it, you know, do they not understand? I mean, like, yeah, maybe send it for like a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, huge players that you will never be able to compete with will just absolutely bitch slap you on the way back down. Um, let alone the fact that, again, this isn't crypto. It's just more bastardized versions of it uh, and an ETF for grandma and grandpa to buy. So yeah. um, what I will say, and I, I want you to talk about your piece on that Ewok, but I, I am curious, though, what maybe this does for altcoins in the meantime. I mean, I don't know if it's one of those things where they're usually going to follow Bitcoin and ETH, you know, and are usually going to lag behind them in a bull market, you know, then lag after them, have higher you know, highs after Bitcoin and Ethereum start to go down. But I wonder, I mean, could this suppress the whole market, you know, these ETFs and them eventually dumping? Um, but because this is ETH, I mean, which is kind of like the, you know, uh, the the final boss of altcoins. I mean, like they're, they're really going to, ETH is really going to pull up the altcoins. Could that make this an even more bullish cycle? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different angles to that, but what do you make of this story overall anyway? Yeah, I think it could. I think, you know, the, as, as we always say, the rising tide lifts all the ships. Um, the one thing I think it will do is once it does rise and and, and people, you know, will ultimately, the, the big players will take profits. Um, I think there will be enough capital coming in to kind of maintain it. 
and we may not see as harsh of a, of a dip uh, in the next bear market, hopefully. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think there will be, as time goes on, things get stronger, they get heavier, they get harder to move. Um, and you're not going to see those 95% pullbacks. You know, Bitcoin, the, the very first year, it did a 90% 90, 90 pullback. Uh, you know, then the next one, it did an 85. Now it's doing 80. Mm. So each cycle, it it, it definitely um, does less of a pullback. Well, I think right. that's, I think that holds true for the rest of the markets too. The stronger they get, the heavier they get, um, as well as being correlated together. Um, it definitely helps things, you know, maintain a, a lot less harsh of a pullback. But, that, you know, that's just my opinion. I think, um, I think they become a little stronger, but it will be still manipulated. And that's the thing you really have to be careful of. Um, you know, how hard will it run? You know, because there, uh, a lot of those major investors aren't looking for a 10,000 X, you know, they're happy when they invest a, a couple billion dollars and they get a three or four X, you know, for them, that's, that's sufficient and, and they'll sell that. That's all they're really looking for. So yeah, that's and that's really the thing to look out for is like maybe not necessarily the the tokens that you're personally invested in, but the overall stature of the market. Like when are these big players going to get out? You know, that that's the yeah. thing that we have to be alert about as we get deep into 2024. And I wanted to um uh I think it was Murder Yoga 10P said, I think this bull run is gonna exceed all our expectations. It's one of those things where like I don't what is the expectation? Because, I mean, the, the most people do believe, and we're going to get into expectations again with the Paul's Chain ecosystem tonight. That's what our poll actually is about as well. But, um, you know, everybody, everybody, I mean, like the majority, thinks the BTC is destined for e definitely six figures, if not 120K, maybe 140K. So the crowd thinks 100 to 140K for BTC. Um, you know, I, it, makes, it would make sense to me. I mean, we saw about a 3X. The last time, I guess you would think maybe we get a 2x this time, but we are seeing, you know, some of the widest adoption, even though it's, again, bastardized adoption with these funds. Um, but, you know, all these major players coming into the market, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I'm kind of sick of the business of, like, trying to project something, you know, it, and it's to the credit of Mr. Chinks in the chat a minute ago, this is what I've been saying for a long time too. Um, there's nothing wrong with keeping expectations low. That way, if we do get faces melted off, it'll be epic, otherwise expected. Yeah, yeah. that's why, I, I mean, like maybe throw out, I mean, know what you want to invest in, but don't worry so much about price targets and worry about like, how much can I get into the market right now? I want to get in as much as possible. And I agree wholeheartedly. I would much rather have lower expectations, right. uh, but it's a win-win. I mean, like, if if I because I'm being more aggressive now, I'm doing everything I can right now to get into the market. I'm not just sitting here with that stupid ass lottery ticket mentality, thinking that I'm going to get a ten thousand X on everything mm -hmm. I invest in. Um, yeah. What do you have to say about well, that? Well, yeah, I mean, and that's why it's kind of good to have, you know, what's one of the topics that we're going to talk about is is you've got Sami saying one thing and you got the Westcott guy saying another thing. Um, it's kind of good to have both, right? I mean. Mm. Maybe Sami doesn't want to overshoot. Maybe he doesn't want to say what he really thinks, but he wants to be safe, right? Um, and and maybe Westcott doesn't care. He's 10,000x for everything. Well, you know, Richard designed all of this stuff very similarly with different, you know, with, with very similar tokenomics type, type game theory anyway. Um, we know what Ethereum did. We know what's possible. Uh, Pulse Chain is just a clone of Ethereum. So... Why not? You know, it did a 14,000 X in the first, what, five years or so. Yeah. Um, why isn't that possible with Pulse Chain? I, I don't see why it's not. It's, 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 a, it's very similar. Fees are lower. You know, when, when, you know, we talked about it earlier, how the gas prices have, have got out of control there for a little bit. Um, that's what it's going to take to get people over there and maybe get the Ethereum devs working on a solution. Um, right. I, I think it kind of all circles back around. You know, and, and there is complete possibility where it could do a 10,000 X, which would be freaking fantastic. Might not do it the first cycle, uh, but by the second, I don't see why it can't. It, 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 it was designed very similarly. So, you know, it's good to have both options. It's good to have both opinions. 
coming at you so that, you know, somebody's going to be right. But, you know, some people don't want to undershoot because then the people that they onboard say, they say like, well, why didn't you tell me it could really do this? Well, you know, I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to expect it. Right. Uh, and then you get the guys that shoot low, um, that, that, then the people are, are upset because you underestimated. And so you get, you, you got to find somewhere in the middle, right? It's going to be somewhere in the middle, take all these averages and, and that's probably going to fall right in the middle of all those somewhere on this cycle. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're losing either way if you're really holding somebody else accountable for like their prediction well, that too. at yeah. the end of the market, I think, regardless of what direction it is. Um, uh, we're getting a lot of really good comments because I just saw another one I wanted to get to uh, when you were re when you were going on there. Um, shit, oh man, I think I missed it. <clears throat> um, but you, something you said he walked. So ETH did a fourteen x yeah fourteen thousand x uh, over like the first five years or so. So add that up. That that's also that that's another thing we need to differentiate here. And something that I don't think a lot of people are being clear on. Are you talking about this cycle? I don't mean you, Ewok. I just mean people when they're talking about like these X's predictions or whatever. Are you talking about like the next year to two years? Or are you talking about ever? You know, if you're saying, oh, yeah, Pulse Chain's going to do a 10,000 X. Well, I mean, if you're waiting to wait like a decade maybe for that or something, um, then maybe it could happen. You know, I mean, it's define what we're also talking about here. Because if it's multiple cycles, yeah, I do agree. Um, especially with even like Pulse X, I, I think. It, it's generous to give it multiple cycles to really see what it can do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we yeah. all plan on being in this for multiple cycles, obviously. So I think that's an important thing to, to qualify too. Like what's the time frame here? Are we talking about a year from now or are we talking about like ever, you know? Right. Um, so. Yeah. And that's the one thing that they don't state, you know, what's, what, what is the time frame? Yes, it can right. do a 10,000 X. Of course it can, but, but how long, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So good conversation. Uh, we will continue that with that more specifically with Paul's chain here in a little bit. Uh, you just mentioned it, Ewok. So the ETH gas fees uh, have gotten already out of control. We're not even really in a crazy bull market yet, although we are in a new cycle, it looks like. But ETH gas fees uh, spiked up huge Thursday of last week is when it began uh, the 9th. Um, they were up well over 100 most of the day. And I've seen that again a couple of days, actually. Um, but specifically last Thursday, though, it was like everybody FOMO'd in. We got like a big pump. Uh, the market hit new two-year highs. That was when Bitcoin wicked up to just over 38K in a couple of spots. So we pulled back from there. ETH went over 2K. Uh, again, everybody kind of FOMO'd into the market, I think, at that time. And that led Richard Hart to tweet that day about Pulse, Pulse being 10,000 times cheaper all day, which was true. Yeah. Uh, and does beg the question again, like you just alluded to, can and will Ethereum ever fix their fees? Um, how far can they really fix them? And will this marketing uh come to will the marketing from richard to come to pulse chain work this cycle because i i think it will because i think like his reach is becoming far greater and as we're going to mention maybe it'll be a, a natural transition here but as we're going to mention uh for whatever reason some of the mainstream content creators and stuff like that for crypto are more supportive of and you know more apt to talk about a layer one being pulse chain than hex for whatever reason uh, so first off, yeah, what do you make of what's going on with the market? ETH just, you know, crazy gas fees right now. Will they do anything to fix it? Um, and then that advertising for Pulse Chain as a result of this. I don't know. I, I would like to think so. Um, the one thing that's good right now, because they did switch to the, the, the proof of stake method, um, where mm -hmm. they are paying the validators and not the miners, right? So I think the miners before had a lot to say about the updates that happened, about the improvements. Uh, they didn't want it, man. They were making all kind of money uh, running their, their miners, and, and they didn't really want the improvements. They didn't want proof of stake either, really. Um, and that's why they kind of forked off and ended up somewhere over in the ditch. Um, but I, I think, I, I'd like to think it will. Um, again, I think it's going to take pulse chain adoption for them to wake up and be like, hey, everyone's leaving. <laughs> you know, they can do it over there for 10,000 times cheaper. Um, and, and I would like to think that they can throw out some improvements uh, that can definitely help. Now, I think 
what was it? The sharding update is one of the ones that they said would improve the gas. I think feed. I just sharded right now, actually. Well, don't shard I'm gonna yourself. have to. I, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. So. To. But yeah, <laughs> I, and I think that's one of them. I, I don't know how hard it is. I, I again, I'm not a coder, so I don't know the difficulty of it. Uh, but there's got to be some things that they can do uh, to 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 mitigate some of these crazy fees. You know, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks for a swap. You were looking at a thousand dollars to end a stake. You were, you know, and this was last cycle. Um, and I don't think they want a repeat of that. I think they want to keep it, you know, somewhat affordable at least. Um, and I think they will. I think they'll they'll try to fix it. Uh, hopefully, it happens this cycle. Usually, bear markets are a good time for that. Uh, so we know they really haven't done many updates in this bear cycle. Uh, you know, once the once the proof of stake went live, haven't seen a whole lot more. Again, I don't know what they're pushing out. I haven't seen anything, uh, but I haven't heard of any crazy updates. So. Yeah, yeah I, I hope they get it fixed. I really do. Uh, but it could be good for our, our ecosystem. Again, you know, I don't know that we really want to push too many fixes because, you know, right now, if we can find a, a nice on-ramp for people because they are spending so much and be like, look, hey, guys, over here, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it, it's a lot cheaper. It's the same damn thing. You probably already have coins that you may not even know about. Uh, get over here kind of thing. I think yeah. it'll be good for adoption. So, you know, while it could be bad for us with some some longer stakes that may be ending at that point, could be good for the other ecosystem. So you've got to balance it out. Which which do you want more? And frankly, you know, we've got the same stakes on Pulse Chain too. So I'm fine. I'm fine with things getting out of whack for a little while. Um, right. You know, in order to benefit our ecosystem on this side. Yeah. yeah, I'm totally, I, I am with you there. Uh, yeah, I saw in the chat and I saw Crypto Coffee say this the other day. He actually said, I think he spent 610, 610 bucks on an end stake on ETH the other day. Uh, Paul's Chain Gangster said he spent 45 on one the other day. I mean, obviously that's going to have to do with the length of the stake. And if coffee, I'm sure coffee's was like a day one, you know, uh, probably, stake probably. basically. Yeah. yeah. So those are traditionally going to be more expensive. But yeah, I mean, that that's clearly untenable. I mean, that's not something that you want now for coffee. That may not be so bad, but Jesus, I mean, like for a, for a fee to be that much to end a, you know, what, three, yeah. four year contract i mean that that thousand is thousand days insane. probably at least i have a couple that you know i made in the early days that are probably about due you know within a, a month or so mm -hmm. not looking forward to it you, you know because they're over a thousand days and every day so the reason they get so high is because it's performing that calculation every day that you staked it has to know well how much did you earn that day times how many t shares did you have um, and it's got to actually figure all of that out. So it is a pretty intensive calculation and you definitely pay for it. You know, you just hope it wasn't a, a, a 500 hex stake. You know what I mean? Right. And they were too low where it's not even profitable. That being said, if that does happen to you guys um, and you want to mitigate the situation, what I would do is rather than end the stake and lose money, Take the amount that it would cost you and potentially just buy more. Um, you'll make out better by just purchasing more at these prices than you would spending it to end a stake and lose money. So mm, it, it's yeah. just something to think about, um, you know, if you have the money. You know, some people, you know, if it's 500 bucks, you know, not everybody has 500 bucks laying around if you you know, if you actually, if you have a early stake from day one or two, you should have 500 bucks laying around, but yeah, you know, you for, so. for, for some of the people that just got in and, and threw just a hundred, a hundred hex, 200 hex, thousand, whatever it may be, you know, you probably need at least 10,000 hex at that point, uh, for it to, to be profitable, I would say roughly. I mean, it's just a guess, but yeah, you know. It's a thought anyway. It's, you know, take the fee that you would have spent uh, by unstaking and just buy more hex. That it's a great point. Yeah, I saw um, Toby Wan bring that up the other day. I think that's a really good point because, yeah, just assess the market at the time. And if it's like, well, dude, I could buy more than this on the market right yeah. now than ending this stake. 
why waste gas fees? You know, if you could just do that, I mean, if you have to pay that anyway, now, the other thing that you could do, and it depends on like kind of your life circumstance or whatever, is maybe just set an alarm for Saturday into Sunday at uh, like 3 a.m. your time or something like that. And maybe just check what uh, gas fees are like yeah. at that time. But yeah, it's it is tough. But I think that's a great suggestion, Ewok, and not not something that everybody thinks about. So, um, yeah, historically, that's about the time um, Saturday yeah. night. Um, I, well, at least Eastern time, you know, two or three in the morning, you know, you usually would get the best rates of the week. Um, and you have 14 days to end it. So you've got, yeah. you know, usually at least one weekend, if not two, uh, within that time before it does start to bleed. So keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely a good option for sure. Um, if you guys are enjoying the stream so far, do us a favor and smash the like button. We do this every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a very active chat tonight, so shout out to you guys. We got Mr. Chinks in there, Armando, Paul Chain Gangster, Murder Yoga, 10P, uh, lots of others. So thank you guys for being in the chat tonight. Um, Can we get this question real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, R Richard asks uh, thoughts on Hedron this cycle. Um, I, I think it's going to do great. You, you know, I think um, Alex is coming up with uh, uh, a new protocol where there'll be a V2 mm -hmm. uh, of the Hedron stuff. You Some cool stuff, some cool features. I forget what they all are right now, but I know you'll be able to take um, both of your Hedrons and bid on the HSIs no matter what chain it's on. Uh, you can use the ETH ones on the Pulse Chain and Pulse Chain on the ETH. So there's some cool stuff coming um, on top of the the staking that already exists. Um, I think it's going to be strong. I, I, you know, I, I think I, now don't forget, there's a lot of big whales that are minting more Hedron every day. Uh, could suppress the price a little bit. Uh, but with the staking, it has definitely helped that. And, you know, as the price of, of Hex goes up, it also brings Hedron up. Same with Maxi, same with some of your other, you know, tokens like that. But yeah, I, I think it, I think it'll do quite well as well. So I yeah, just wanted I, to answer him. I think so too. And while I know you and I really haven't been, you know, buying any of that on the open market or anything, just minting it with our yeah. hex stakes, basically, that's really been the practice. And yeah, that's another thing too, that, you know, there, it is kind of liquidity bonded due to where these things are going to go. So um, I'm just, I think you are too, Ewok, with my Hedron and Icosa, I'm just basically continuing to yield on my full stack. It, you know it just rolling whatever term it is you have so yep. i forget all of the terms but I, I think it goes as low as 30 days depending on how much you have up to is it is 120 the max i'm trying to remember what the the max mm, is for... i don't i don't know if that's the max or or not i, I don't know what the max okay. is actually you know okay. but but just don't forget don't forget to mint it at least if you end your stake same yeah. with the communist token uh communis it's there. There's a whole other thing that we haven't even talked about. Uh, we probably will have to. Yeah, I still didn't that. put it in the notes this week. Forgot to do it again this week. One but, of these days, uh, we're going to have to go through Johnny Sachs's whole yeah. uh, special weapon thing that he's been calling it. Um, I, I don't even really want to get into it because I don't know. I haven't. I'm too dumb it. on it. Yeah, I have. I haven't watched enough. I watched like one stream uh, with him and Axis yeah. and stuff like that, but I, I yeah. still have to to learn more about it myself. Yeah. So, so but either way, don't forget to mint it at least. You know, if you're not yeah. providing liquidity in one of the groups, it has all it has to do with the liquidity for for that token that supposedly will help Hex along the way. Again. Uh, I haven't dug into it. I shouldn't really even speak of it, but it is out there. There's material out there. You know, look into it. See what you think. Definitely. Yeah, that's communist. Uh spelled like it sounds basically not communist but communist so check that out uh, a lot of streams out there with johnny Sachs lately as well um i'm gonna throw you a curveball you walk because i didn't mention this to you earlier today when i was putting the notes together for the show but real quick i wanted to address it because this is the second time that i've seen richard hart on twitter say this and endorse this person but he pretty mm. vehemently uh was behind vivek ramaswamy today on twitter for the second time uh vivek if anybody didn't or missed the Republican debate, even though I think we all know who the candidate's going to be here in the U.S. Uh, when it comes to the 2024 election for the Republicans. Um, but Vivek had a lot of mic drop moments. Basically, it was one of those debates where if you watch a liberal or any kind of like um, 
rhino or like old school Republican who had something to say about it. That, that Vivek embarrassed himself. He was desperate. And then anybody <laughs> that's just like neutral and watching it was like, okay, he clearly crushed everybody else on the stage. Um, but anyway, Richard though, encouraging others to endorse him in the U S uh, certainly can't, I can certainly see why he's a fan of him. I mean, like you, you and I were just talking about him the other day after that debate with some of the yeah. things that he said, uh, a lot of awesome moments. Um, called Nikki Haley um, Dick Cheney in three-inch heels, which was pretty funny. He brought up her daughter <laughs> being like addicted to TikTok, and then she flipped out about, I'll oh, keep my daughter's name out of your mouth. She's 25 years old, right? Uh, apparently. It's not like it was a little <clears throat> kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's been bopping tr- you know, dropping truth bombs for a while. I know there's people out there that, and I, I get this, and this is why I was a skeptic for a little while as well about Ramaswamy, but there's been people out there like, oh, you know, if somebody comes along and they're saying all the right things and they, they, they're they this suave, you know, because it's kind of the Barack Obama effect a little bit because yeah. he's such a good speaker, smart young guy, uh, you know, to be wary of that. But he's got me at this point. I mean, you know, at this point, like I, I've seen enough from him that I, I think his intentions are good. Um, I'll be voting, you know, in the presidential election for who the Republican nominee is, basically, regardless, I think, at this point. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's going to be Donald Trump. But, yeah, what do you make of Richard's backing of Vivek, though? I mean, I I, I like where he's coming from, totally sees why, you know, why Richard is so into him. And, you know, I think as we get to, like, 2028, probably, if, if unless Vivek is even, like, uh, Trump's running mate, maybe. Uh, when this is all said and done, which I think would be really fascinating. I'm basically in favor of any outsider who isn't a classic politician for either yep. party uh, taking over the party. I'm basically a fan of that. So, yeah, what yeah. do you make of this? What do you make about I, Richard's endorsement of Vivek, though? I, I, I like it. And I think that one of the big reasons is dude's not 78 years old. You, you know what I, I mean? I, I really think you've got to make some changes at some point. We've got to get rid of the old just old politician ways of thinking um, if we want to get this country back in shape and make it better. Um, You know, I I know Richard believes in a lot of the things, you know, I think they've actually had some discussion on Twitter. Uh, I've seen Mm. tagging of each other back and forth uh, and Vivek actually responded to a couple things. So pretty cool to see that, Uh, you know, He's just a, a younger way of thinking, and and I think yeah. again, I, you know, we we've got to see a little bit of that to to definitely help turn things around. Um, I, I support it too. Like I, again, I I think I agree with what you said too. You know, whoever the Republican nomination is is probably which way I'll vote. But yeah. um, you know, unless we get a, a far better. Well, I'm not even going to go there because I don't think it's possible. Uh, but yeah, but a, better, um, a better Democratic well, uh, candidate? I don't think that. Maybe a different one. I don't know about. Well, I don't know. It, it depends on your be definition. Of better. To be better, right? I, I think yeah. it would definitely have to be way different to be better. Uh, We're definitely you know, getting demonetized tonight. Y- yeah. Say. Well. Yeah. Well. Oh well. You know, RFK. Yeah. The, you know. Well, he's already dropped. He's a, he's not a Democrat. Any, I mean, he no, is, he's, he's uh, independent, independent, right? Yeah, yeah he's so. independent now. So, yeah, I mean, I could see his his benefits as well. So, there's, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, I I like the fact that he threw somebody out there. Unfortunately, I think he lives overseas. We don't even know where Richard lives, so it's yeah. definitely not in the United vote. States. He can't vote anyway. Well, he may be able to if he's still a citizen, may be able to send an absentee ballot or whatever it may be, but. Um, again, you know, it's one of the things I kind of cringe talk in politics because it can always, it it usually doesn't help things. Um, you know, you're going to piss off half the people anyway. So, um, but yeah, I, I I think he's got some good ideas. I, I, I liked what he did and, you know, it's funny how he did kind of, he did use the, the Trump tactic a little bit of, uh, throwing some insults out there, you know, yeah, right. uh, and, and a lot of people like that, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be he also, interesting. He interesting. definitely, yeah, I, he definitely, like you said, offers like a, a young candidate for once, which is yeah. good, especially in the Republican party, which could use some, definitely use some new blood. Um, but also again, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter who it is to me. Um, anybody who's not part of like the typical political 
establishment and not really a Democrat or Republican, right. I'm, I'm more apt to listen to, especially these businessmen. I mean, like, like it or not, I think Donald Trump set a precedent, um, you know, and I don't just mean like for the Republican Party or for people like him or whatever, for anybody that, you know, somebody can come in that isn't a part of this party and and win like a business yeah. outsider. Sure. And I am more apt to trust businessmen who are already unbelievably wealthy that really don't need this position to the level as a career politician, you know, yeah. um, that, that, you know, they're usually going to be filled with even more corruption. I mean, Hey, let's face it. I mean, probably all of them are corrupt to a certain level, but I, I just have a tendency to believe people who are actual businessmen, businesswomen, whatever that have made it already, you know? Yeah. I saw a statistic too, that, that Trump was the only president that we've had in the last, uh, I don't know, 20 years or so, maybe all the way back to Reagan that did not increase his wealth when he became president. It's kind mm. of interesting uh, yeah. to see the, the, you know, disparity between all of them and how much their, their net worth went up where his actually went down, you know? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I think, you know, we always talk about RH being in it for the glory. I mean, that's another thing too. You know, I mean, it's, if somebody's already rich, you, I, I tend to trust them more because it's like, well, they're already there. Like they don't really need much more from you. Whereas like lying, cheating politicians that have been at it forever, uh, making like low six figures and with a crazy uh, illegal stock portfolio and stuff have a lot more they can take from you. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind, I'm not telling you to vote, who to vote for Democrat, Republican, whatever, but um, you know, it, it's interesting though, to see this from our age. And uh, I do like Ramaswamy. So we'll see where things yeah, go. From there. It'll be interesting. Yeah, so let's get into the, the topic du jour here with this uh, Alex the Whale. And we do know that it was him. We don't really know if his name was Alex. Who knows? Maybe that's just the pseudonym that he gave himself. But we do know that he has a wallet that has been tracked by people because, again, this is crypto and you can see the blockchain. Um, but yeah, Sunday evening, Ehex plummeted 20 25% in like five minutes. I mean, it was a huge red candle out of nowhere as famed whale Alex continues to dump. Uh, he actually allegedly ended up selling his entire position uh, by the end of the night that night um, after pretending straight up, you know, lying, if that was really him, that he had other intentions on stream with Matty Allen um, a few weeks ago. That was the stream where Matty was on it. His, his typical group, Toby Wan, I think, Crispy Man and Axis were on there. Yeah. Um, but it's another reason not to take these guys, the, these whale people seriously or mimic what they do in either direction with, with in any market really you know everybody's on michael burry today because he ended a short and he's going to put in a new I, I don't give a shit what michael burry's doing with the s p 500 right now but uh this is what people do i mean they follow what whales do um a question i want to ask you ewok I, I think we're totally going to agree on this point but i have seen some dissent on twitter kind of amongst people but does Maddie deserve any hate that he gets for having Alex on? Do you think? Um, the, the, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that stream. I know we did before, but should Maddie be held accountable? To, to his credit, I've seen him on Twitter, you know, asking the day after they had that stream, like, did you guys value this stream? Did you hate it? Whatever. What do you think um, now that we're seeing this from Alex, who said that he was, oh, I'm whole, it's going to go way past 56 cents. I'm all in, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then he's selling on a 2X. So what do you think? Um, does Maddie deserve any hate he's getting for this? No, he doesn't deserve any hate. You know, Maddie's making videos just like we are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because he's got, I don't even know how many subscribers Maddie has. He's probably over 10,000, I would guess. Um, it, with that is going to come a lot of haters. Uh, you're not going to make everybody happy. You know, it doesn't matter what he does or what he covers. There's always going to be people that are riding him. Um, so no, I, I, I think somebody reached out to him and they said, well, Hey, let's do this on stream. And he's like, Oh yeah. Okay, great. You know, makes good, good watching. You know, Definitely. Th there's a, there's a, there's a angle though, that people aren't talking about. And I was thinking about this earlier when I was reading the notes and what we we're going to talk about tonight. And this is a possibility and I'm not saying it's, it's probability. It's a possibility. I, I think because we saw the dumping happen, you know, on stream. So the first question you have to ask was, was this guy just doing a pump and dump? Well, we don't know his true intentions. Only he really knows that. Uh, was he planning all along to, to FOMO people buying in and then just make a little profit and get out? Or 
did the whale watching become so intense where he couldn't make a move without everybody knowing what his address was. Um, it, it's one of the reasons why you, <clears throat> you and I were talking about this the other night is when he sold off everything, he sent it to stake.com, which is a, a online yeah. casino <clears throat> gambling site where you can send just about any um, crypto in to your account. Um, and then honestly, you have a lot of choices on what they send you back. So you can completely act as a mixer uh, on anything, send it in, create a new address, send it back out, and then maybe buy in where he's not being watched. You know, that's a possibility too that I think nobody has really talked about. Um, if they did, I, I haven't heard it, but, you know, maybe he it's just the whale watching got too intense for him. Because like I said, they knew every time he did anything and possible possible that he didn't like that. So, you know, there could always be that. But again, back to the whole thing, the whale splashing, whatever, there's always going to be people in every coin that own way more than you do that can do this to the price. You know, people freak out all the time uh, about these whales. And are we back to the, the price it was before? I think we've almost gotten back to where it was before he dumped. Maybe, maybe not quite, but I think it's close. So, uh, well, you know, not at this very moment. I mean, that now we're heading back towards there again. Uh, okay. Because well, today's been a red day, but yeah, I yeah. mean, it did recover a little bit over the last. Yeah, I mean, it, it it recovers, and you know, honestly, it doesn't take much to get back to where it was. People put so much weight and emphasis on on these these whale accounts when they sell. You know, it is part of the beauty of, of especially hex, uh, where the low liquidity can make the price run like crazy. Uh, but it can also make it dip really hard. You know, it's just one of the one of the benefits that we talk about of of, of being a low liquidity token like that is you know it doesn't take a whole lot of buying to to get some green candles, um, and then as it gets higher, the liquidity will definitely increase to kind of keep it up there until bear market time happens, uh, liquidity gets removed, and then it falls again pretty hard. So, you know. It is what it is. I, I just think that that, that, that is a possibility uh, of, you know, him possibly not like being watched. <laughs> so yeah. who knows what happens True. when he sends it into stake.com unless there's somebody that, you know, can analyze that and see what's coming back out. But I really don't think there's a way to do that. So. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think I understand everybody's uh, wanting to assume that there's something nefarious or whatever going on, which I mean, if you want to call, you know, selling on a profit nefarious, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, if that's what the guy wants to do, it's what he wants to do. Yep. But I on the Matty Allen point. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, either way, um, it, it, at the very least, it's a it's a funny interview to look back on. I mean, the guy was <laughs> definitely weird while on stream. And, and I'll say this, too. I think Axis said it and Crispy Man might have said it, too. Both of them after, I mean, they were being polite, but after the guy left, um, they said, you know, it's hard for me to take anybody at, at, at face value, I'll say, when they're not doxxed. So, yeah, I totally understand that. And those guys uh, may have already been proven right about that. And and Maddie even was skeptical um, on stream, actually, because he kept saying that there were people trying to get into the stream on the back end that he didn't invite and had no idea how they got the link or anything like that. So evidently, whoever this person was, like, shared the link with other people as well. Oh, yeah, didn't hear that. yeah, he was saying that on the stream. Okay, um, I missed that part. Yes, he was. He was like zoned out at the beginning of the interview because he was dealing with that and seeing these guys trying to get in the stream, and he's like, "Who the hell are these people? I didn't send the link to them." Uh, so yeah, there, there's many shady things that did go on there, but um, yeah, I don't know what to make of the guy. But it, look, overall, <laughs> what does this tell you? Let's stop giving a shit about like what a whale wallet does in any direction. Yeah. I mean, yes, for a couple hours on Sunday night, the price went down. Okay. Um, not really that big of a deal. You know, another nope. opportunity to buy. And and long term, for where this thing is going to go, that really doesn't matter that much. I don't no. think people realize that. Um, and I think we're better off that he got out now, right? Instead yeah, of yeah. when it was up to, you know, say we were approaching 10 cents, 20 cents, and, and he dumped it. That could have been really bad for for you know psyches of everybody when you see that man we got here again and now it's dumping again right. so yeah let's be thankful he got out now
And we talked about this before, you know, if you think that this is unique to Pulse Chain, like this ecosystem or Hex, you're totally wrong because the only thing unique and actually good about this scenario is that we know the wallet. You know, we we see the wallet. We, it's on chain. Everybody, the whole goddamn community is paying attention to it and even apparently having the guy on stream if that was the guy. So we're seeing all that. You don't see that when you're in Polygon Matic. You don't see that when you're in Solana. You don't see it when you're in these other tokens. You just get dumped on massively at some point. You have no idea who the people are. Um, so, yeah. Johnny was shaking in his boots. Yeah, Johnny came on that stream a little bit later, actually. Um, that that was an awesome stream. I mean, it was like three hours or something like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it was weird. Um, it is what it is. So I don't know what's up with that Alex guy now. But uh, he is apparently out. So Good. we'll wait and see what right. whale everybody wants to pay attention to next and uh, yep. move on from there. Um, yep. Yep, in two years we'll be remember when that guy bought all that on stream and it, yeah, you know it, that's it'll what be a it'll funny be. Story. It'll be a funny story. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the stream, do us a favor and hit the like. We do this every single Tuesday night at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's talk about another main topic tonight. We talked about it a little bit earlier, so yeah, um, we'll just go to each of them because they've gone back and forth on Twitter a little bit, not fighting necessarily or anything like that because i don't think Sami would really get in fights but um you know westcott crypto types i guess i'll say and what i mean by that is people who are you know hey ten thousand x this ecosystem's doing a ten thousand x we already saw hex do it richard has said it'll do it i i'm i'm not stopping at anything less than a ten thousand x and anything below that you're an idiot for calling it um you know that low Sami, on the other hand you know as he has seen some of the things happen in this market, you know, the price has been suppressed for so long, all these different events that have gone on, people being pissed off about Pulse X and single-sided staking and yada, 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 the hex e hex debate, whatever else. Um, but Sami types adjusting their, you know, narrative down to, well, if the you know, he's just basically pulling the crowd, which we've done here tonight. And I know I purposely made the options very spread out on the Pulse Chain ecosystem price predictions. And we'll look at that in a minute. But he's basically saying, hey, if the consensus by most people is 100x at this point, I have to lower my targets and assume like a 30 to 50x just because where the crowd is, I'm not going to go as high as that. Um, looking at I, what we put in the chat tonight, so for the poll, and again, I purposely made it wildly different, but uh, so we had 30x from here. 500x from here for the Pulse Chain ecosystem or a 10,000x. It's actually relatively split amongst the three, to my surprise. Uh, the majority is just a 30x right now at 40%. Uh, 33% are saying 500x, which that would be kind of in line with what a lot of people were thinking, I think, um, from even back when this launched, maybe. And then 27% are saying 10,000x at the moment. So um, I, I don't know what that necessarily means. But then it also begs the question, and there's so much kind of game theory to this, but I mean, if Sami is thinking, you know, 100x is um, what the crowd is saying, that I'm going to say 30 to 50, what if the crowd now has this short-term bias and is upset about all these things, and we don't know what's in store for the next couple of years, and we, they're drastically low to the downside, and we do get that 500x from here or something like that? Um like we talked about earlier, psychologically, I want to plan for the worst and I'm putting in everything that I can right now. And I know that there's no other place I'd rather be in crypto. So I know that's true for me either way. But what do you make of this, Ewok? I mean, like just looking at, you don't have to necessarily go into Westcott or Sami specifically, but just those kind of combative views and, and what your stance is on it. Yeah, you, you know, the one bad thing about underestimating, I was thinking about this earlier, is that people think it's reached where it's going um and they try to take profits <laughs> and it continues to go further and, you know that's the problem with uh you know underestimating is when you think you may have the top and you sell uh and then it keeps running and you've got nothing left and you got to buy back in you know that's that's one of the hard parts about about underestimating you know again i i think sami is just playing it safe I don't mm -hmm. think he wants to be known as one of those moon boys. Um, has he done it on other things? Yeah, maybe. Um, but again, it's it's more of a conservative estimate. Um, and mm -hmm. I think he would rather undershoot than overshoot anyway. So I, I just think that's where he's at. But like I said, the problem with undershooting is people hit that target and think that that's it. Um, and we know even when, when Hex made its run up the first time, you know, it did what between sixty and eighty percent pullbacks 
seven, eight times, uh, maybe more yeah. uh, during that run up. And I think a lot of people got left behind because they thought, oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. And it just kept going. It kept, you know, it, it, it doubled in price 13, 14 times. So, you know, that's the problem. That's, you know, people, instead of dollar costing out the same way they dollar costed in during a cycle, um, you know, they're going to get in trouble. So mm -hmm. just be careful. Well, to your point right there, you walk. Yeah. Like um, if, if they're shooting low and it's like, oh shit, I started a DCA out at a 30 X and now look what's happening. Well, I just kind of already answered the question I was going to say, but we're not talking about like selling your whole stack at the 30 X, but no. if you're planning on a 30 X, you know, I don't think you could be that pissed at yourself if you took out 10% at that point or something, you know, and Let's let's face this too. I mean, we're just saying here right now in 2023, pointing at a random date on a calendar when maybe we hit that theoretical 30x or whatever it is, you're gonna have all these different market conditions happening at the time. So it's not like you're gonna be totally in the dark as to like, oh, are we still going up or are we gonna go down? I mean, like there's gonna be plenty of things indicating to you where we're going. I mean, you know, you even think back to the big shifts in the, the this overall market. If you look at our streams in January of this year. I had turned bullish, figured that the bottom was in. It was saying that pretty hardcore from the beginning of January. Ewok wasn't. So, you know, what? take that as you will. Uh, but, you know, you will see the tides turning months in advance or weeks in advance. And you're going to have some kind of an indication. So just because we're here right now, don't think like, oh, my God, I got to make sure I hit it on the day. And what if I miss it? There's going to be plenty of clues, I think, as to where the market's headed, you know. And yep. you can DCA out. So, um yeah, I, I just I'm not I'm not a fan of having that ten thousand X um expectation. And if you know, if a guy like Westcott, if that's what he's talking about for the long term, you know, possibilities for this ecosystem, okay. I mean, I don't really have any issues with that. Right. But I think most people when they're having this discussion are talking about this cycle. Um I know that's what we're referencing, and I think that's what most people are referencing because let's face it, cycles in crypto are like a goddamn car wreck. You know, I mean it's you know, it's not as if oh man, I'm down like 10% over the last couple of years. I mean, you are going to be down 85% on whatever your portfolio is if you did not get out of the market. So right. that's why people are so and, serious about wanting to get it right. Yeah, and Mr. Chinks brings it up too. It depends on how long-term how, how long your mindset is, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what happens now in this cycle may not matter in 10 years. Uh, you know, it could be a very tiny blip on, on a very large chart. So, you know, if you can delay gratification, uh, then it really doesn't matter what you've withstood as far as uh, drawbacks or pullbacks go. You, you know, it's eventually going to hit that 10,000 X. We, we all think, uh, you know, at least that's what it was designed to do. And I, that's what I would stick with. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, uh, interesting comment here from Red Bull Green Bear. You're missing the point, bro, boy. It's not a 10,000x expectation. It's a promise, a fantasy, a story, and you need to understand how you can modulate that as a commentator. Uh, get more. Bro okay, I think I see what he's saying here, um, being sarcastic. So, yeah, I mean, uh, um, whatever. I mean, if people want to, I, I don't see the value in. Um, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen. So I don't want to say lying to your audience. I mean, sure, I create clickbait thumbnails on purpose to get people to click that do involve numbers sometimes, but very rarely, you know, the 10,000 X variety. So I understand trying to get an audience and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I would much rather not have that as a realistic expectation. Yeah. And I would be careful using the word promise. Um, it just, yeah, right. It can, it can go very badly. You know, expectation is one thing, but promise. You know, I, you're not going to ever hear Richard saying, I promise it'll do 10,000 X. And he's the one no, that designed no. it. So, so I, I don't like to say I promise either. <laughs> yeah, definitely not promise. Uh, yeah, I got what you're saying there, man. No, no worries. Um, as we're talking here, we see we're having another big dip in the ecosystem right now. Actually, Pulse just went down to uh, four zeros and a six, three, five. So maybe we need to shut the hell up and get out of here. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's our fault. I don't know what's going on. But uh, hey, these are the times to buy. I mean, like this is everybody's, you know, starting to whine and cry and uh, ask for Wait, handouts and down? stuff like that. What went down? Uh, everything. Um, the eco, the whole thing. Pulse yeah. changes went down by about, oh, uh, 
a couple percent in the last hour, basically. So, um, gotcha. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. There's people asking for handouts. We got, um, you know, uh, yeah. it, it's I a need, red day. You know? I need new glasses. Anybody want to donate? I, if, can't you get, now, can you not get new glasses for like, like I've gone on Zenny Optical before, like some of these websites. I mean, you can <laughs> literally pay like 75 bucks and get a new pair of frames. Maybe not even that. I don't know. Um, yeah. I think so. insurance even covers one pair every two years. So I, I'm, I'm good there. I don't need anybody's okay. donations. Um, okay. And I especially wouldn't hold it for the bear market either. So. <laughs> Through the bull market. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, that that's one thing. Um, I doctors, I'm going to, I'm going to call them out right now. I think that they're one of the, one of the many scams out there because the last time I wanted to get a new cheap pair of frames, they wanted me to come into their office, spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I called them and I'm like, can you just give me what my last prescription was? Just give me a prescription. I'm just going to buy some online. Well, we can't really disclose that information until you come in. I'm like, it's my prescription. Why can't you just right. tell me what it is? Well, I'll give it to you, but they're probably not going to honor it because it's out of date now or whatever. I'm going on zennyoptical.com. <laughs> nobody don't gives care. a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, now, when was this issued, sir? I mean, like, right. nobody is worrying about that. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, slight diversion there. Um, All good. All good. Let's cap off on this. So, our friends at Allcoin Daily, and I will say, of all of the mainstream crypto influencers with big channels, Altcoin Daily have been the ones that have seemed to, we talked about this last week. I think like they're more legit guys um, if you do catch them, you know, publicly. You know, a lot of these yeah. people have handlers and are allowed to talk about certain things. Yep. Um, yep. They, you know, they have mentioned Hex, Pulse Chain a little bit before. But interestingly enough, they just put out a video the other day. They had a segment uh, calling what is going to be the next Cardano, the next ADA. And they actually chose Pulse Chain, of all things. Now, I don't know what they mean by next ADA. Um, it, do they mean like, you know, a uh, a lagging performer in the bull market? I'm not sure what they mean by that. But I guess they probably mean like predominant L1 that people yeah. flock to maybe. Um, but yeah, they did talk about Pulse. Spec they they actually brought up Gold Key's tweet where he he had like eight different bullet points about like all these great statistics about pulse chain adoption right. and everything so far. Uh Allcoin Daily speculated that it could do well on their channel. I just said use a gold key thing. Um, but then, and this is the weird part to me, and this is the thing we're gonna get to, and I think it's gonna be a sticking point that we do see throughout the bull market with some of these influencers. Um, but they, they pumped up pulse chain, but then they said specifically, um, Unlike Hex, it doesn't come with baggage. It doesn't come with the baggage that Hex does. Um, what does that mean? That's just what I don't, don't understand. Like, I know they were obviously referencing Richard Hart and talked about him for a moment, but they're both products by Richard Hart. Why does Pulse Chain not come with the baggage of Hex? I just don't understand. Is it just because it is a layer one and you understand what that concept is? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that they just think... I think they see 38% APY with Hex and they see that like, oh, you make this great return or whatever. And they just think that that is not possible, but they right. do understand how an L1 works. So, right. hey, That's I am. Okay. So I am glad they talked about it on their channel. And I think they are going to continue to, to do it here and there and not so much Hex. But what do you think? I mean, like in terms of them and other influencers, as we get into the bull market, is that going to be the main thing? And maybe I should look at it as a positive too, because because Pulse Chain is an L1, Pulse X is a DEX, is it more likely that people will talk about those that are more mainstream as opposed to Hex, which they have just always dubbed a scam you yeah. know, four years ago? Yeah, I, I think so. I think here's what's happening. Uh, I, I, I saw this comment earlier and I was like, yes, that's exactly what's going on. These guys are filling up their bags uh, slowly. Mm. Uh, once they get the amount of tokens that they want, they will start talking about it because you're right. It is a it is a layer one. Uh, people understand it. People have such a hard time with hex because you know there is a lot of game theory built in. There's a lot of different uh, rules, I guess. Not really rules, but you know, it's it, when you think about it, it's simple. It, it's a contract with yourself. You know, all you got to do is honor what you say you're going to do, and you make more. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's pretty much all it is, you know, but there's a lot of preconceived notions that you have to stake it and you have to do this or whatever, you know, Richard has a large amount. Well, he's got a large amount of pulse chain too. 
you know, the OA has just as much. So, you know, when they refer to baggage, I don't know what they're talking about uh, other than the meme that they did with Richard carrying all the Louis Vuitton bags uh, right beside it. And they were referring to baggage. Yeah. You know, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. But uh, again, I, I really think that these guys, so, and it only takes one or two uh, of these influencers to start talking about it. The other ones, they will start to fill their bags up too. And then they will talk about it as well. And, you know, eventually they'll dump it as just like everybody else does when they, when they do that. Uh, but again, they, they, they will pump their bags first or excuse me, they'll fill their bags up before they start talking about it. And I think True. all coin daily has, has definitely done that. Uh, I don't remember if they were one of the, um, sacrificers that, that Richard knew who it was. You know, we all know the moon Carl. Um, he yeah. sacrificed, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, I forget what his name was. Uh, we think, uh, Ben Armstrong, Sun, right? Sonny, Sonny decree, Sonny decree oh, yeah, was yeah, another yeah. one. So we, we all know he sacrificed, uh, Ben Armstrong definitely. Uh, so we know a lot of these guys did, um, you know, and it's just a matter of now that it, the price is down, are they going to buy more? And I think they will. Um, once they get it filled up, look out. They're going to talk about it. It's just yeah. another one of the things, um, especially when, like we said, when the ETH prices get out of control, it's going to be somewhere to point these guys to, hey, over here, guys, <laughs> I have some. Why not talk about it? And And that's the way you're going to see. Uh, a lot of these guys, you know, handling it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to buy what they need to now, and then they'll really start promoting it later on. But it does make sense to me. I mean, yeah, everybody's familiar with what L1s are. Their fans are going to know what L1s are. We look at all the failed ones from last cycle that aren't coming back, like Phantom. I know people are all over Solana right now, but I don't think it's going to be the top L1 to perform. Um, so, yeah, we, we know – people know what that is, and I think that they will – <clears throat> perpetuate that and uh, try to pump their own bag. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally cool with Hulk. I, I'm I, in no way. Uh, and I don't think Johnny meant this, but in no way was I like saying that I don't want all coin daily talking about it. I mean, I, that's totally fine. And I think that they are open to that stuff. Um, it's just funny that people do still have that disparity in their opinions between yeah. what Paul's chain is and like what hex is. So, it's well, just, just remember the big saying is watch what people do, not what they say. Definitely. Yeah. And that'll get you your answer. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's what we need to be actually watching. So um, to, to finish up on this point, um, did you want to get into the Rabby wallet review at all Ewok or talk about anything that you do know about it? I know we have a lot of different or a few anyway, different alternatives to MetaMask popping up here. We've had internet money, of course, um, that we've talked about before. Rabby wallet is another popular one. Now we've talked about Aurochs before. I know Randy Halarski has as well. Um, but we know that we are going to need alternatives to MetaMask as like the premier Ether uh, Ethereum wallet here over the next cycle, two cycles or so, because they're slowly but surely taking, you know, traditional crypto rights away. I mean, they're, they're changing the way they do things. There's going to be a time where they probably have full-blown KYC um, with their wallet. So yeah, what do you know about Rabi so far? I, I've hear, heard people reference it here and there. I, I haven't myself made the jump to anything else yet, but certainly not necessarily a fan of MetaMask anymore. So yeah. what, what I, can you tell us about Rabi? I haven't either. Um, I did download it. I looked at it. I, I didn't really do anything. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I know Crypto Coffee has used it. I I'm pretty sure he has talked good things about it. It yeah. will connect with, you know, all the contracts that we use, things like that. Um, I, I know there's one issue with internet money. Uh, I think it's being worked on, but it was, it had to do with a wallet connect update uh, that it was having trouble actually connecting yeah. with the hex contract. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't want to point people in the direction of, you know, getting something, move it all over and then not being able to use it. You know, obviously your first layer of security would be a hardware wallet uh, where you're just essentially using these as a front end anyway. Uh, but, you know, in the event that MetaMask does go the route of the full KYC, which eventually they will, you know, it's, it's there, they've implemented that by uh, that buy button. I haven't seen it yet or noticed it. Uh, I'm not really on it that much. 
but yeah. I haven't noticed it anyway on, on, on my side. And I don't know if you'll have to click a button to say upgrade to it. Uh, or if you can just kind of keep the the old version, I, I think they would probably force that through. Uh, but yeah, so. I mean, as time goes on, uh, you know, we we slowly lose the rights of the, you know, DeFi of what it truly is. Um, and yeah, there are other options out there. You know, once I can do a full install and and activate a wallet and actually use it. Uh, I would feel more comfortable talking about it. I just really haven't had a chance or had the need, like you said, you know, haven't just haven't needed it yet. Uh, but you, you know, we definitely want to to do that before, you know, that they always say you should dig your well before you're thirsty. Um, <laughs> right. And that way you have the water when you need it kind of thing. So, you, you know, I, it is on my to-do list of, of things to do. Um, I, I have downloaded the Aurox and, and used it. Um, I have the internet money one on my phone, um, you know, used it, played around with it a little bit. I just haven't interacted with the contract, uh, because I don't like importing seed words into my phone. So that's, that's a big yeah, no, no. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of where I am at with it, but I have heard very good things about the Rabby wallet. Um, I have also heard that there are fake links out there. Um, so be very, very careful if you do look for it. I'm pretty sure sh- before I don't even want to say it without confirming is, is it rabbi.io? I actually don't even know. Um, I'll check uh, real quick. Well, uh, we want to make sure because there is a, I think there's a fake link that's rabbi.com out there and somebody just had their um, wallet drained yeah. because, because it was a fake extension. So just be very, very careful. Go to the website, um, look it up, even Google rabbi wallet and, and look at the company um information before downloading it just to verify that it is the right one it's definitely io i'm on the site right now okay um, i thought so i thought so yeah and this is one of those things to your point right there like with rabbi wallet internet money uh Orox, anything else you want to try um in replacing metamask or whatever i don't know about ue walk but in the past when i've done stuff like that or whenever i first got a hardware wallet and did you know backed up the way i did my backups on that and everything that's like a take a day off from work type of event you know yep. what i mean like i don't know about you but like i've uh, when i want to get all that kind of stuff set up or maybe even if you're replacing a pc or getting an extra pc or something or whatever just like going to some other security risk that's something for me it's almost like when i do my taxes or something where like i want to take a day out mm-hmm. and just like figure all this stuff out switch it over be unencumbered by other distractions or anything and get it you know, sort it out. Cause that is a big thing. I mean, like people do and they will, it's funny because you don't think as much about like security and stuff like that in the bear market, because maybe your portfolio is so low, you just don't give a shit anymore and you're not thinking about it or anything. But all of a sudden, if you do make that 30, 50, hundred X or something in the bull market, you're looking at that balance and it's like, okay, well, I, am I good here? Like, is everything in order? Um, yeah. And it's a good time to be doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, and that's when you have to be not. extra careful because the scammers will come out of the woodwork with all kind of contracts that you get to, you know, yeah. just it only takes one click. Um, so just be extremely careful. And, you know, we probably don't preach it enough uh, about security and, and things like that. Uh, but but there are so many things that I've just seen and learned over time. And I don't think anything of it. You know, I get emails from, from MetaMask all the time or Coinbase yeah. telling me that I should probably, Oh you know, yeah. Something expired. Recent. And uh, I just go in and I just put 12 random words. Like you should go F yourself. Mm. Um, I put 12 words in and send it to them and tell them they're a goddamn scammer and, and things like that just to mess yeah. with them because I know it's not real. But yeah, yeah, you a got scammed there uh, a couple of weeks yeah. ago. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it it is definitely a good time to do that. And you know, hopefully, we do get more clarity on these other products because I'm totally open to another wallet. Obviously, we talked about and heard about a potential Richard Hart wallet at some point uh, that everybody wants to sacrifice for. Of course, um, I say that kind of tongue in cheekly, but yeah. yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, always good to have competing products out there because MetaMask has just become the de facto. You know, we always talk about that first mover advantage thing and everything. Like it is the Ethereum wallet right now. So yeah. um, we want competitors that are legitimate here for yeah. sure. So, well, competitors yeah. will, you know, th- make them stronger. So, you know, yeah. hopefully we get something else that's 
you know, we, we already have something else, but hopefully they can battle to where it does kind of put MetaMask on notice to say, hey, look, there's other stuff out there. We don't yeah. need to sign KYC. We don't need to have you store our information. Um, you know, that's one of the good things about, you know, internet money guys is they don't capture any information at all. So, right. you know, I don't know about Rabi. I don't know about Orox, but um, I know internet money. They do not. So they don't, they don't save anything. There's the best way to, to not get your information compromised is to not store it in the first place. So. Plus with MetaMask, I mean, you've got that creepy fox just staring at your every move. Yeah. You know, you open that extension, you're moving your cursor around, getting ready Watch to type your password in, and he's just, you know, doing this. That Like, that is not a comforting sight, MetaMask. So <laughs> um, let's get rid of the fox. Hashtag uh, ban the fox. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to wrap us up for this episode. This has been a really good one. The chat has been awesome tonight. We thank you guys. Thank you, Johnny Chaos, with your huge following for tweeting out the show tonight and helping us out, getting some extra viewers. But the chat's been unreal the last few weeks. We really thank you guys. Mr. Chinks, Dank popping in here late. Uh, Alan, of course, Armando, uh, NTY, a whole bunch of people in here tonight. So, yeah, uh, Ewok is representing there as well tonight. Um, so, yeah, we want to thank you guys all for being here. We do this every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you did not hit the like, please do so on your way out, and we'll catch you next week. This has been Broke Boy Crypto for Crypto Ewok right here on the Creed of Crypto podcast. Take it easy, guys.